everybody, welcome. All the way back to 1996 as I go and talk about this. WrestleMania 12. Now as you can see from the cover of this video, it's about, it was all revolving around these three things. The return of this man, the Ultimate Warrior. The feud between these two guys, Undertaker and Big Daddy Cool Diesel and these two men. Two of the best wrestlers of all time, the best two wrestlers in my opinion of all time, Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels. Now, at the time I was a huge Shawn Michaels fan, so keep that in mind going into this. So, first of all, this DVD started off with uh, the free-for-all section. It was basically like a half an hour show before the pay-per-view started that was aired free so that people saw it and thought, you know what, I've seen this now. I'm hooked. I want to now watch the pay-per-view. And it's a good little idea. I believe they should continue doing it. I don't really think they do it as much as they should do. Right. This match that they had on the free-for-all was for the WWE Tag Team titles. The Body Donners versus the Godwins. In the finals of the Tag Team Tournament. Now. Remember at the last, end of the last video. I talked a lot about Jenny McCarthy and Pamela Anderson. These two blonde bombshells. Who WWE, WWE paid a hell of a lot to bring these two women in. And they didn't really look like they were. Well, Pam Anderson didn't look like she wanted to be there. Well, this year they had their own. They had Sunny. Now, this is a girl who generally has a passion for professional wrestling. They had the, their very own blonde bombshell. And they decided to give her away on the free-for-all show. As she managed the body donners <clears throat> to beat the Godwins in this uh, tag team titles match. This match was okay. The Godwins... They were interesting uh, face tag team, you know, good old country boys. And then you had the Body Donners, where they were like the... I don't really know what the gimmick was. They were heels. I think they were sort of fitness fanatics. And, um... Uh, Body Donner, yeah, that was sort of in the name, isn't it? They were uh, Skip, uh, which was uh, Chris Candido, who was going out with Sonny at the time. And long-term relationship. And uh, Zip, who I think is Tom Pritchard, who I think is now the guy who's booking TNA. So it's funny how these things, like, kind of revolve around each other. Yeah, the body done has got the win because Sonny got up on the apron, flashed a bit of arse to um, Phineas Godwin, who was naked Midian in the end, and Dennis Knight. And then I think he got rolled up by Chris Candido, and then the body done has got the win. The new tag team champions and winners of the tag team titles tournament. And before this was the uh, the Slammies, and Sonny was going on about, oh, I got the best buns and the best manager, and look, I'm the best manager because I just showed my buns and we won the titles. Yeah, awesome. Then we go into the pay view itself. That was just a bit of a rubbish thing on the side, but I thought I'd talk about it anyway. First proper match on the card, Yokozuna, Ahmed Johnson and Jake the Snake Roberts versus Vader, Owen Hart and the British Bulldog. Now the backstory behind this is that Yokozuna was a member of Jim Cornette's little camp, or Camp Cornette as it was known. He'd fallen out with them. He turned face. Vader, and part of the reason for him falling out was because Vader had turned up and Vader was like the new big monster heel and he was taking over that role of the monster in that little group. Um, if the face team won it, then Yokozuna got 10 minutes alone with Jim Cornette or something like that, or 5 minutes in the ring with Jim Cornette. So that was an interesting little thing to throw in there. This match was pretty dull. It was... It was your Money in the Bank sort of match, where they're just throwing loads of guys in there just so that they're on the card. Money in the Bank is a great version of this, because it makes a, you guarantee like a four-star, five-star match out of it. But whereas with this, because it was a three-on-three -three tag team match and they hadn't come up with the idea of that uh, Money in the Bank yet, this was very flat, very boring, and it was just a case of why we're doing this. And in the end, I think the heel team ended up getting the win, and uh, Yokozuna didn't get his comeback on uh, Jim Cornette, so that was pretty pointless. Next match... In what I was going to call the worst match of all time, Roddy Roddy Piper versus Goldust in a Hollywood backlot brawl. They basically fought out in the parking lot, and it was probably all pre recorded footage, and it was crap. Goldust ends up driving away, Roddy Piper ends up driving after him. During the rest of the show, they kept on intercutting little bits of, oh, this is Roddy Piper um, chasing uh, Goldust, and the police are following him. What this actually was, which is ridiculous, and this is probably the entire reason why they wanted to do this match was so they could put this footage into WrestleMania, which is strange, is that the footage they used was OJ Simpson being chased by the police when he was wanted for the murder of his wife and her new lover. That's just ridiculous. The, the commentator is like, oh, this is a bit deja vu, and it was just pure wrestle crap. Pure crap. And we had to put up this all the way through the show. Next match, Savio Vega versus Stone Cold Steve Austin. I was a big Savio Vega fan at the time. It all stems from him debuting at King of the Ring 1995, like a house of fire. And that spin wheel kick, I remember practicing that in my mate's garden. Uh, over and over again, 
the next day after King of the Ring, after seeing that video, I'm going, oh, this guy's amazing. I can't believe that he lost in the final to Viscera Mabel, who was at the time, King Mabel. But yeah, now we've got Savio Vega versus Steve Austin, who I thought was terribly boring at the time. You've got to remember, I was 1996. I was eight years old at the time. I thought Austin was so boring. Anyway, in this match, Austin wins the match via help from his manager, Ted DiBiase, the Million Dollar Man. Uh, the referee's down, Austin hits him with the title belt a few times and gets the pinfall. I thought Austin was terrible, I would have released him if I was them at the time. Obviously looking back I was incredibly wrong. And I think that's very important in terms of me doing these videos because like everything I say is not 100% correct it's like, and I will admit when I'm wrong which I definitely was wrong then. Next match, Ultimate Warrior versus Hunter Hearst Helmsley. The return of the Ultimate Warrior. This is massive stuff. Warrior returns Faces Triple H and Triple H gives him the pedigree within about one or two minutes. But before he even gets a chance to cover him, Warrior pops up and just gets straight back up. What had happened here was, earlier on, well, it was well known within the WWE that Kevin Nash and Scott Hall were basically on their way out. So, they had a tag team cage match or something like that at uh, Madison Square Garden at Howe Show, where they did an infamous curtain call. If you've not seen it, you Google... Uh, so YouTube, uh, Madison Square Garden, curtain call, then Google it and find out the backstory behind it all because I've not got really enough time to go into everything about it. But basically, these four guys, Triple H, Shawn Michaels, Razor Ramon and Kevin Nash all broke kayfabe by embracing in the ring after a match. And they were two good guys and two bad guys, so it was a bit of a taboo thing at the time. But because he'd done this, first of all, they stopped him from winning the King of the Ring later this year and that went to Austin and that really propelled Austin's career. And secondly, he was massively in the doghouse. He was so far in the doghouse that he was put, being put in slot matches with Henry Godwin. He was forced to give Ultimate Warrior his finisher and then he kicked, didn't even kick out. He just got, he literally got pedigree and stood straight back up. And then Warrior then goes on to beat him. After the match, Hunter, Hunter Hearst Helmsley, who was brought to the ring by his... Uh, he used to have a different valet every week, and this time it was a woman called Sable, who was re whose real name was Rena Mero, and was married to Mark Mero, who was Johnny B. Bad in WCW. So, in the back, Mark Mero's having an interview. He's the new uh, wrestler in the World Wrestling Federation, which is interesting, because he just brought back the Ultimate Warrior, and straight after his match, he decided to do an interview segment with Mark Mero. So we've just got one new wrestler back, and now we're going to get another one, Sean. So not the time for it, WrestleMania, I don't think. But basically, yeah, he's in the back. He's doing this interview. Triple H stumbles upon him. They start arguing, and blah, 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 blah. Rina Mero, surprisingly enough, Sable ends up being the valet of Matt Mero. What a surprise. Anyway, next match. Diesel versus The Undertaker. Now, the Diesel was booked really strongly before this. He was he was the world champion for almost like a year or something, wasn't he? And then, leading into this, him and The Undertaker were both going for Bret Hart's world title. And basically, both guys kept on um, foiling the other one's plans and basically making them lose the match. For example, there's a match at the Royal Rumble where Diesel comes down and distracts Bret Hart. And then I think it was an In Your House before this event was... Um, Diesel versus Bret Hart in a cage match and then Undertaker comes from out under the ring, pulls uh, Diesel down and Bret Hart climbs over and wins the match. So now these had this feud, you've but you stopped me from winning the title, no you stopped me from winning the title, okay let's butt heads now, let's go against each other at WrestleMania. Diesel was booked strong throughout the much match, he gave Undertaker everything, I think he even gave him two power bombs. Wasn't enough to keep the Undertaker down, obviously Undertaker beats him, keeps the streak alive and Diesel is now buried, not buried but... The thing is, you, they made Diesel give Undertaker all of his best stuff, and yet the Undertaker still beats him, which makes the Undertaker look a lot stronger than Diesel. So now Diesel goes to WCW, he doesn't look as strong as he would have, having, for example, beaten the Undertaker. Obviously, he wasn't going to beat the Undertaker, because we all know now that there's, there's been a streak all this time. Right, after this match, Roddy Piper, has now, well, Goldust, pulls into the arena and runs to ringside for some reason. I don't understand why he came back. They could have explained it like, oh, he's come back for his manager and real life wife Terry Runnels, uh, Marlena. They didn't really explain that, they just saw him with her and they, like he sort of hobbled to ringside. And then Roddy Piper chased him, they ended up fighting in the ring. Now, I was about to, I was thinking in my head that I know exactly what I'm gonna say about this match. I'm gonna tell everyone that this was the worst WrestleMania match of all time. But to be honest, the crowd were really into it 
and it was quite entertaining when they got back in the ring. The only one thing it fell down on was the times when they were simulating gay rape. They were simulating gay rape in the middle of a wrestling ring. And bear in mind, this is uh, 1996. This is very much a, not really a PG time because it says 15 on the box here, as you can see there. But still, this is a very much a time where it's very orientated towards kids, and they were doing this, and I felt really... I remember at the time feeling really uncomfortable watching it with my dad the next morning. I remember watching this the very next morning after WrestleMania. We taped it at our house. Next morning, I woke up. Mom and my dad's getting ready for work, having breakfast or whatever. I put this match on, and I felt so uncomfortable watching this. And I think my dad actually said to, him, said to me, I'll turn this off. And I felt so embarrassed. I think I just fast-forward it through it the first time but it's ridiculous basically the guys were kissing each other Goldust was rubbing Roddy Piper's ass I know it was a part of his gimmick but some of it was a bit on top where Roddy Piper was down and Goldust just mounts him and starts rubbing himself and then rubbing Roddy Piper and he kisses Piper and then Piper gets up and kisses Goldust then he strips him off and he's wearing like women's underwear and stuff that was quite funny that was a good moment but the, the stuff was a bit on top where they're rubbing each other and kissing each other it was a bit not children's entertainment I like I wouldn't want that. Like I'm, I'm not being homophobic or anything, because I wouldn't want a man to be doing that to a woman or a woman to be doing that to a man when he's unconscious either in the ring. I don't think it's appropriate whatsoever to be shown in a wrestling program. Um, but yeah, it was a do a bit entertaining where like um, he strips him and he's like wearing women's underwear and Roddy Piper's beating his ass and the crowd were absolutely loving it on fire, cheering like this got one of the big like the biggest pops of the night from my recollection. That little segment. Right, main event time. Iron Man match for the WWE Championship. Shawn Michaels had won the Royal Rumble. He's going against Bret the Hitman Hart. I was a huge Shawn Michaels fan. My mate was a huge Bret Hart fan. We had a bit of banter going into it. Who's going to win? I was saying Shawn Michaels is going to win. He was saying Bret Hart's going to win. And I couldn't wait for this. And Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart put on a fantastic Iron Man match. There's times when I think this is really good. There's times that I watch it. And there's times that I think it's really boring. The times when I've not watched it for a while. I've just noticed half of my face is blue and half of my face is yellow. That's quite interesting, isn't it? It's because of the lighting, that's the outdoor lighting, that's the artificial lighting, because it's a bit dark, you see. Anyway, so Shawn Michaels versus Bret the Hitman Hart. I am a match. It was a fantastic match. It ended up being 0 0. This takes it away from me a little bit because because I was going into this for re to re watch it, knowing that it's a 0 0 match. I was just like, oh, this match is dragging. And it, it did drag a little bit. It was really entertaining. They did do a lot of good moves and stuff in the match, and they did tell a really good story all the way through it. But the fact that I knew it was nil-nil sort of takes away all rewatchability. Like, I don't really want to watch this match ever again. Well, not that I don't really want to watch it ever again. Just not by myself. I was I watched this by myself, and I was just... I was bored. Oh, they told a good match, because I knew the ending, and I knew it was so long. It, it did, like, great on me a little bit. But at the time, watching it, fantastic stuff. Goes to nil nil. Gorilla Monsoon comes out and says there must be a winner. There must be a winner. So they come back out. Shawn Michaels hits a super kick. Doesn't cover Brett. Hits it again. Beats him. One, two, three. Shawn Michaels is the champion. Great stuff. I was a huge fan. The boyhood dream has come true. This is a huge moment in Shawn Michaels' career. This propelled him to be the man. To be the man that everyone thinks he is now. Shawn Michaels, in my opinion, is the best wrestler of all time. He's not my favourite wrestler of all time, but in my opinion, he's the best wrestler of all time. Because of his... He had everything in terms of he's a draw, he's charismatic, he can get it done in the ring, he's got appeal, and he's entertaining. He's got everything. He's got everything that you could possibly want. Now, I want to know your thoughts on this show. Oh, actually, one other thing I'd like to talk about was that although Shawn Michaels was the baby face in this and they were supposed to be turning Brett sort of heel after this it didn't really come off it did not come off whatsoever in my eyes because well, that, well the benefit of hindsight here because I was watching it thinking Shawn Michaels is such a knobhead he was such a knobhead in this match there's a part where he does this move like and he ends up outside the ring he ends up running into the cameraman who you could have seen before and he basically turns around to the cameraman the one who's filming live and says, get the fuck out of my way. I'll stay the fuck out of my way. And he swears. He swears to this cameraman. It's like, it's a bit rude. I, I couldn't imagine John Cena doing that now. I couldn't even imagine Randy Orton doing that now. And he's supposed to be like the bad guy of the current wrestling. You know what I mean? It's, just, it's really rude. And like, 
there's part where Diesel was walking to the ring and he was like, I'm the shit, I'm telling you. And I was just like, really? Do we really need you to say this? I don't think we do. But yeah, let me know what you think of this show. This show's a very important show. This was the launch of Shawn Michaels. This was probably the the catapult for the Shawn Michaels Bret Hart massive feud that ended in that rivalries DVD like last year. Let me know what you think of this pay per view. Let me know what you think of my video. Let me know what you think of all the matches, all the guys on the card, any, any guy you got a, a current opinion on. Do you want to just get it out there? Let me know. We'll have a bit of discussion. Um, yeah, thank you very, very much for watching. This is 15 minutes, so that's a good little number. And uh, subscribe above, like, like or dislike, and I'll see you later.